Hi everyone, good day. This is Dr. Von, and this is gonna be my last lecture video for histopathology. And our topic for today is all about your staining of your carbohydrates. For this topic, our main reference will be your basic and advanced laboratory techniques in histopathology and cytology by Praneb. I am using this book versus your Gregorius because this book is more organized in terms of presenting the information. Tapos may mga algorithm siya na hindi natin makikita kay Gregorius. But still, I want you to read your Gregorius because may mga information such as na mga old staining techniques sa carbohydrates na nandito lamang kang Gregorius. So you still have to read these two books. For today, our learning objectives at the end of this video lecture, the student is able to learn the different stains used in carbohydrate staining. So we will be discussing four important staining strategy in your carbohydrates. Tapos, we will understand the basic concept or principle involved in your carbohydrate staining. So the four staining strategy, explain natin ano ang mga indications nila, ano ang principle ng mga staining technique ng carbohydrates na ito, as well as the procedure and steps. Then lastly, we will really discuss the procedure of your carbohydrate staining. As we all know, other than your routine hematoxylin and your eosin stain, there are various special stains that are essential now or part of a routine laboratory work. So these are the commonly used stain for different substances. So these are the different substances, your carbohydrate, your lipid, your nucleic acid, your hemosiderin pigment, your bile pigment, and your melanin. But for this discussion, we will be focusing about your carbohydrate kasi this is a staining for your carbohydrate. So these are the four stains na ating explain isa-isa. We have your periodic acid shift or your PAS stain. We have your alashan blue. We have the combination of your periodic acid shift na stain and your alashan blue. And lastly, we have your musicarmine. So before that, we, before we go directly to the individual staining strategy, let's first define and go back or have an overview about your carbohydrates. Remember that your carbohydrates are the main source of energy in our body. It is mobilized in the form of your monosaccharides or your glucose. And remember that the storage form of your carbohydrates is the polysaccharide or specifically the your glycogen or it could be bound to your substances such as your mucine your carbohydrates is composed or consists of your carbon hydrogen and your oxygen the general empirical structure of your carbohydrates is ch2o or depending on the number so you can just simply multiply depending on the formula they are organic compounds organized in the form of aldehydes or ketones with multiple hydroxyl groups coming off the carbon chain. And remember that the building blocks of all carbohydrates are your simple sugars called your monosaccharide. So this is a single unit of your sugar tinatawag natin na monosaccharide. A monosaccharide can be a polyhydroxyaldehyde or a polyhydroxyketone. So tinat ang monosaccharide pwedeng maging aldose or pwedeng maging keto. So Let's review, Doc, what is the difference between your aldose and your keto. So, we can see in these two diagram, the first diagram, itong diagram na to, this is actually your aldose. The second diagram, this is actually your ketos. Ang difference nila, unang-una, you have to locate the type of your, the type of the functional group. Pag sinabi natin aldose, the functional group is your aldehyde. So, Doc, saan dito ang aldehyde? Itong naka-box. So this is actually the functional group of your aldose, which is an aldehyde, which is a C double bond O, presence of hydrogen, and another carbon. Pag sinabi natin ketose, what is the functional group of our ketos? The functional group of your ketos is a ketone. So saan dito ang ketone? This is the ketone, C double bond O, plus attached with another carbon and another carbon. So this is now your ketone na group. So how can we differentiate again? Number one, locate the functional group. And secondly, identify the location of your carbonyl group. Saan, lo anong location ng ating carbonyl group for this diagram? For this one, 
the carbonyl group of your aldose is located at the terminal part of your structure. So, nakikita natin, nasa terminal part siya ng ating structure. Pag aldose, how about for ketose? The carbonyl group of your of your ketos is located in between or it is not located in the terminal. So, in any position except the terminal location. Kasi pag terminal, that's gonna be your aldehyde. Pag in between, that's gonna be your ketose. So, that's how you differentiate your aldose and your ketose by means of the functional group and the location of your carbonyl. So, don't you worry guys, this is just actually a review of what you learn in your biochemistry. At least a uh, parang nire-refresh lang natin yung mga information na na-remember nyo sa, sa inyong carbohydrates. So before we go to the different staining strategy or techniques, we have to ident uh, ident understand the classification of carbohydrates. Kasi later on, if we can able to uh, classify correctly our carbohydrates, then it's easier for us to identify what staining strategy or techniques for carbohydrate are we going to use for us to identify these different carbohydrates. So first, we have your, your simple carbohydrates. Pag sinabi natin simple carbohydrates, it is purely sugar without any other substances. Uh, attached to it. Pag sinabi natin glycoconjugates, it's a complex carbohydrates, meaning it is a sugar plus in combination with other substances. It could be your proteins or it could be your lipids. So, first, unahin natin yung simple carbohydrates. Sa simple carbohydrates, meron tayong tinatawag na monosaccharides. Meron din tayong oligosaccharides. And lastly, we have your polysaccharides. So, later on, isa-isahin natin yan. I-review natin. For your glycoconjugates or your complex carbohydrates, meron tayong acid mucopolysaccharides, meron tayong mucine, and others such as your glycolipid, membrane protein, and your blood group antigen. Let's first discuss your simple carbohydrates. Ano mga simple carbohydrates? Meron tayong monosaccharides, oligosaccharides, and your polysaccharide. For your monosaccharides, again, these are the simplest form of your Carbohydrates. Again, anong sinabi ko? Your monosaccharide can contain either your aldehyde or your ketone group. And they have a varying numbers of your carbon atoms. Spreading 5 carbon atoms, which is your pentose, or your 6 carbon atoms, which is your hexose. So, example ng monosaccharides, meron tayong glucose, meron tayong galactose, and also we have your fructose. How about your oligosaccharides? Your oligosaccharides can be defined as, depending on the textbook, may ibang textbook na magde-define si oligosaccharides as a, a substance with two, or 2 to 10 simple unit of your sugar, at least 2 to 10. So pag sinabi natin 2 to 10, dyan na nai-include ang ating disaccharide. Example ng disaccharide, which is your maltose and sucrose. But some textbook would say that your oligosaccharide has uh, 3 to 10 units of your sugar. Kaya, kaya nasa-separate yung definition ni disaccharide. But for this textbook, your oligosaccharide includes now your disaccharides also. Such as your maltose, sucrose, and your, ano itong mnemonics natin dito pag disaccharide, we have your MLS. So, maltose, lactose, and your sucrose. Which is an example of your disaccharides which is under your oligosaccharide. Kasi nga, ang definition dito ng oligosaccharide is 2 to 10 units of sugar. Pag greater than 10 units of sugar, that's gonna be your polysaccharide, such as your glycogen and your starch. Remember, your glycogen is the storage form of your carbohydrates in our liver. So, this is the basic structure of your, of your uh, simple sugars. We have your monosaccharide, we have your oligosaccharide. Remember, your oligosaccharide sucrose is a combination of one unit of glucose and another unit of fructose. Ano ngang bond ang nagko-connect sa glucose and fructose? Anong bond? It is your glycosidic bond. Then we have your polysaccharides, more than 10 units of sugar, your glycogen. Now we proceed with your glycoconjugates or tinatawag natin na complex carbohydrate. Your glycoconjugates or tinatawag natin na proteoglycans, these are primarily groups of proteins that are extensively glycosylated. So, these are proteins, proteins na merong sugar. Kaya tinatawag natin na 
glycoconjugates. The proteoglycans have a central core protein that is covalently bound to your polysaccharides. So example of these are your acid mucopolysaccharides such as your carboxylated. Example nyan is your hyaluronic acid or sulfated. Ang example nyan is your chondritin sulfate. So the carbohydrate part of the proteoglycan is known as your glycosaminoglycan. So these are the different types of your glycosaminoglycan such as your chondritin sulfate present sa ating cartilage, ligament, and bone. We have also your dermatan sulfate which is present in your skin. We have your heparan sulfate which is present in your aorta. We have your heparin which is present in the granules of your mast cells. And lastly, we have your hyaluronic acid which is present in your synovial fluid. So as what you can see, your glycosaminoglycans is located in the different organ system of our body. And lastly, as still part of your glycoconjugates, we have your mucin. And your mucin is divided into two. We have your neutral mucin and with you, we have your acidic mucin. Your neutral mucin is found in the surface epithelial cells of your stomach. And your acid mucin is, we have two. We have your sialomucin and your sulfomucin. Your sialomucin in your goblet cells and your salivary glands. And your sulfomucin, mucous glands of the bronchus. Your mucins are glycoproteins of high molecular weight and are composed of your polysaccharide chain and a protein component. So what is the function of this mucin? Simply, it is it covers your epithelial cells and makes a physical, um, physical barrier that protects the cell from an external injury. So your mucin is 80% carbohydrate. It is in hexosamine containing carbohydrate plus 20% protein. So Majority of your mucin is still carbohydrate, 80% carbohydrate, which is a hexosamine containing carbohydrate and 20% protein. The polysaccharide part of this mucin can either be pwede siyang neutral or pwede siyang weakly acidic or strongly acidic. So remember that ha, the polysaccharide part ng ating mucin pwede siyang neutral mucin, pwede siyang acidic either weakly or strongly acidic. So this is now the overview of the different staining strategy or technique that we are going to use for your carbohydrates. So again, ito na yung importance kung bakit kinaklasify natin yung carbohydrates for us to identify the appropriate staining technique for our carbohydrates. So first, we have your mucin. As what you can see, your mucin is divided into two, right? We have your acid mucin and we have your neutral mucin. For us to identify whether it is an acid or neutral mucin, we will now be using different staining technique. So for an acid mucin, it is alcyon blue positive and PAS negative. For your neutral mucin, it is alcyon blue negative and PAS positive. That's your neutral mucin. However, your neutral mucin can also be, pwede din siyang maging alcyon blue positive. Once it becomes alcyon blue positive plus PAS positive, it can, we will have a difficulty differentiating whether it is a neutral mucin or your glycogen. But for that part, we will now be using your diastase para ma-separate natin ang neutral mucin and your glycogen. So what we're going to use, anong gagamitin natin? Gagamitin natin your diastase. Once it is a diastase resistant, it's going to be your neutral mucin. Pag diastase sensitive ito, that's gonna be your glycogen. So later on, this is just an overview. Later on, we will discuss this um, separately. So let's discuss first your periodic acid shift stain or your PAS stain. So your glycogen is the polysaccharide. It's, a, it's demonstrated by your PAS reaction. It is, it also demonstrate your neutral polysaccharides that are present in your basement membrane and also secretion of different glands in our body. Doc, ano po bang indication why we are using your PAS stain or your periodic acid shift stain? So number one, to demonstrate polysaccharides. PAS helps to demonstrate glycogen, cellulose, and starch. It demonstrates glycogen in your glycogen storage disorders. 
Basement membrane of the glands, glomeruli, and etc. can also be demonstrated by this stain. The capsule of various fungi such as your cryptococci, your histoplasma, your blastomycosis containing carbohydrate material is also demonstrated by your PAS. So, importante talaga siya to demonstrate your glycogen. So, in a disorder such as your glycogen storage disorder, ano po bang nangyayari dyan? Your glycogen storage disorder is a type of disorder wherein there is accumulation of your glycogen in the liver. Remember that your glycogen can be mo uh, can be mobilized if it is converted into glucose. Pag kailangan natin ng glucose, of course, kukuha tayo sa ating glycogen. But remember, for us to convert your glycogen into glucose, you need an enzyme. In glycogen storage disorder, there is a deficiency of a certain enzyme. Therefore, your glycogen will not be converted into glucose. Anong nangyayari? Your glycogen accumulates in your in your liver. Therefore, this can be demonstrated by your periodic acid shift stain. What else? In your fungi, your fungi contains cell wall. Merong cell wall ang ating fungi. And, and then, this cell wall is composed of your polysaccharide. That is why it could also be stained using this periodic acid shift stain. Another indication, we have your glycoproteins, your mucin, particularly your neutral mucin is also demonstrated by PAS. The stain is helpful to stain mucin of your in the cervical, intestinal, and your bronchial gland. So remember, ha, not only glycogen, but specific to your neutral mucine. Another indication, your glycolipid, your PAS, help to demonstrate cerebrocytes and gangliosides. Your glucocerebrocytes and your galactocerebrocytes are accumulated in your goucher and your crab diseases, respectively. Your gangliosides are accumulated in rare lysosomal storage disease. So, the same with our uh, glycogen storage disorder, may certain lack tayo ng insang, uh, certain enzymes which we cannot utilize our glycolipids or your glycogen. Another one, we have your pigments, certain pigments such as uh, lipofusion and pigments of your Dobbin-Johnson syndrome are also demonstrated by your PAS stain. Your plasma cells or the russell bodies of your plasma cells are also stained by your PAS. So, ano tong russell bodies? These are actually a multiple round cytoplasmic hyaline inclusions that are frequently seen in a bone marrow aspirates of patients suffering from multiple myeloma. So, this is now the procedure for your periodic acid shift stain. So, unang-una, you have to deparaffinize. Second, pass through the graded lower concentration of alcohol and section smear to bring in water. Then, you will oxidize with your periodic acid, 1% of your periodic acid for 5-10 minutes. So, this is going to be the first solution para sa ating periodic acid shift stain. So, ito yung complete PS stain kit. Unang-una, this is going to be your periodic acid. Secondly, this is now your shift reagent. And thirdly, this is going to be your uh, counter stain using your hematoxylin. So after oxidizing with periodic acid, you clean it with water, then keep it in your shift reagent for 20 to 30 minutes, our second solution. Then clean in running tap water for 5 minutes, then you counter stain with your hematoxylin, then wash in tap water for bluing, then dehydrate in your absolute alcohol. So this is going to be your dehydration followed by clearing and lastly your mounting. So as what you can see, the same principle na tinuro ko dati, yung principle of staining for your paraffin section. Ano nga yung mga steps na tinuro ko? First, we have your deparaffinization, followed by followed by sections to alcohol, followed by sections to water, followed by the staining, followed by your dehydration, clearing, and mounting. So the principle that we learned from my previous discussion can now be applied here. Kaya lang nag add na tayo ng mga staining na ating ginagamit for what uh, for uh, different part or for a particular na staining. For this example, ang ginamit natin is your PAS. Kaya nagdadagdag tayo ng periodic acid, shift reagent, and your hematoxylin. But again, the same principle na tinuro ko. Depending lang kung anong staining na ating gagamitin. So you don't have to memorize na kasi alam na natin to and you just applied the staining procedure. 
So this is now the principle that I want you to understand or to learn while using your PAS staining. So these are the components of your solution. So solution one, ano nga yun? Meron tayong 1% na periodic acid composed of your periodic acid and your distilled water. For the second solution, meron tayong shifts reagent composed of your basic fusion, distilled water, potassium metabisulfite, your hydrochloric acid, and your activated charcoal. So ito yung principle guys. Ito yung carbohydrates natin. Paano nagkakaroon ng reaction? The hydroxyl group of your carbohydrates. Saan dito ang hydroxyl group? Itong OH. So this is now the hydroxyl group of your carbohydrates. So this can be oxidized by your periodic acid. So your this is your periodic acid. It will oxidize the hydroxyl group of your carbohydrate forming now your aldehyde. Specifically your two aldehyde groups. Tapos, these aldehyde groups will react to your Schiff's reagent. This is your Schiff's reagent will react to the aldehyde groups forming now a magenta colored compound or your dye complex. So again, very simple. Ang hydroxyl group ng ating, ng ating carbohydrate will be oxidized by your periodic acid forming now your aldehyde groups. And this aldehyde group will react to your Schiff's reagent forming now your dye complex to form now your magenta colored compound. That is why the result will be for glycogen and glycoprotein, it's gonna be your magenta color. So what are other materials positive for your PAS reaction? Meron tayong glycogen, starch, your mucin, your reticulin, your basement membrane, and your capsule of your fungi, and etc. So first example natin, this first diagram, this is actually a liver biopsy of a patient with glycogen storage disease. Kaya, as what you can see, there will be accumulation of your glycogen, this magenta color. So that represents now your glycogen. So next diagram, second diagram, this is a, a lymph node biopsy, a mesenteric lymph node biopsy showing now your yeast. So this is now your yeast or your fungi. And the cell wall is being stained with your PAS because the cell wall of your fungi is composed of your polysaccharide. So we're done with your PAS. So let's proceed with another staining strategy which is your Alchian blue staining. So your Alchian blue stains your acid mucin in your acidic pH of 2.5 such as your cyalomucin and your sulfomucin. It stains your mucin of your salivary glands, prostate, and your large intestine. So your Alchian blue also stains your proteoglycans of your cartilaginous material. So doc, ano po ba ang indication of using your Alchian blue? First indication will be your intestinal metaplastic cells in your Barrett's esophagus and also in your stomach biopsy. Remember that your intestinal metaplastic cell contains acid mucin and these cells in your Barrett's esophagus are better demonstrated by your Alchian blue. Doc, ano po ba yung Barrett's esophagus? Your Barrett's esophagus a condition, is a condition in which the lining ng ating esophagus changes, becoming more like the lining of your small intestine rather than the esophagus. So, the lining of your esophagus changes and nagiging parang uh, small intestine na kanyang lining. So, bakit po naggaga dito? Because of the chronic inflammation resulting from a gastroesophageal reflux disease. So, there is an acid reflux. Because of this, it will uh, cause a changes in the lining sa ating bar sa ating esophagus kaya tinatawag natin na Barrett's esophagus and this Barrett's esophagus contains a lot of your acid mucin kaya na demonstrate or na sustain ng ating Alchian blue another one we have your mucinous adenocarcinoma of the ovary pag pag narinig niyo ang word na adeno it means a glandular tissue it involves a glandular tissue or a mucinous glandular tissue kaya Mucinous adenocarcinoma of the ovary. Also in your pleural mesothelial cell. The pleural mesothelial cells contains hyaluronic acid that are Alchian blue positive and sensitive to your hyaluronidase enzyme. So in comparison to adenocarcinoma cells, are Alchian blue positive and resistant to your hyaluro, uh, hyaluronidase enzyme. So ito yung staining procedure natin for your Alchian blue stain. Number one, again, same principle na natutunan natin. You have to 
deparaffinize, then rehydrate of the section of smear by graded alcohol, then rinse in your water. Keep the sm uh, smear in your ocean blue for 30 minutes, rinse in running water for 5 minutes, then our counter stain will be your neutral fast red for 10 minutes. Then rinse in 95% of your ethanol and you dehydrate that in your absolute alcohol. Then you do your clearing, then you mount. So ito ating solution, your Alcyon Blue solution composed of your Alcyon Blue 1% aqueous solution and your acetic acid. Tapos yung ating counter stain which is your neutral red solution composed of your neutral fast red, aluminum sulfate, and your deionized water. So anong principle ng ating Alcyon, uh, ng Alcyon Blue staining method? Again, your Alcyon Blue is a group of water-soluble polyvalent uh, polyvalent basic dye. So, remember, it's a basic dye. Ano nga pag basic dye? Pag basic dye, it is a it is a it is a positively charged na dye. So, the dye is base, is the dye is made of your copper containing thalocyanin ring with a copper atom in the center. So, this is the copper atom in the center. The thalocyanin ring is also attached with four isothyronium group or which is positively charged. So, mayroon din siyang isothyronium group attached on it. So, the positively charged Alcyon Blue dye complex has an attraction with your anionic sites of your mucine. So, the copper imparts the blue color of your dye mucine complex. Again, basic lang, yung ating dye is positively charged which will be attracted to the anionic sites of our mucine which is a negatively charge and this complex will now impart a blue color that is why the acid mucine sialomucine and your sulfomucine proteoglycans and hyaluronic acid will take a blue color so for our first diagram this is now your barrett's esophagus so this is a mucine stains of your barrett's esophag uh, barrett's mucosa your intestinal metaplastic cells remember it contains acid mucine and these cells in your barrett's esophagus are better demonstrated by your Alcyon Blue. Kaya nakikita nyo, nagkakaroon na ng kulay na blue. For our second diagram, this is actually your colon stained with Alcyon Blue. So nakikita natin yung ating mga mucines. So we're done with your PAS and your Alcyon Blue. Now we will proceed with a combination ng ating PAS Alcyon Blue staining. So Doc, pwede pala natin i-combine yung PAS and Alcyon Blue. Of course, pwede. The indication of using this combination is same section helps to demonstrate both acidic and depulsing in the same section. So this will help us to identify more dif our different carbohydrate substances. So ang ano ating procedure for this one? The same principle. Kaya lang, we will, it's a combination now ng ating PAS and Alcyon Blue. First, we have to deparanize then sa ating alcohol, then water. Ang unang stain na ating gagamitin is that your Alcyon Blue. The same pa rin. You keep the smear in Alcyon Blue for 30 minutes. Then you wash it with water. Then next step will be your oxidizing using your periodic acid for 5 to 10 minutes. The same procedure. You keep it in your shifts reagent for 20 to 30 minutes. Then clean in running tap water for another 5 minutes. Then you are still going to use your counter stain which is your hematoxylin then you wash with water you dehydrate you clear and lastly you mount so ano result natin your glycogen same pa rin, will be magenta color your acid mucine will be blue in color so your acid mucines your sulfomucines and your sialomucines proteoglycans and hyaluronic acid will stain color blue so lahat ng nagsustain ng color blue dito that's gonna be your your acid mucine. For your neutral mucine, your glycogen or virus glycoproteins, that's gonna be color red. Itong color red dito or your magenta color, that's gonna be your neutral mucine or glycogens. So our last staining strategy, we have your music carmine staining. So what is the indication of using your music carmine? So your music carmine stain demonstrate now your acid mucine. So similar with your Alcyon blue staining because it will demonstrate your acid mucine. It stains mucine of 
intestinal adenocarcinoma. So the capsule of fungi such as your cryptococci is also stained by your mucicarmine. Mucicarmine rather. So what is the steps? Again, deparinize, you rehydrate with your grated alcohol, you rinse with water, then first you are going to use your counter stain which is your hematoxylin. Then you wash with water and keep in your mucicarmine solution for 30 minutes. Then rinse in water, rinse in your 95% ethanol and your dehyd then dehydrate, you clear and lastly you going to mount. So ano ating solution natin? So we are going to use your Southgate Musicarmine um, stock solution. So your carmine, your aluminum hydroxide, your alcohol, and your anhydrous aluminum chloride is the composition for this solution. So this is the basic schematic diagram for your Musicarmine stain solution. So, so the basic principle here is that your positively charged carmine complex binds with your negatively charged anionic acid mucin. Parang basic lang din. It's a positively charged dye. It will be attracted to a negatively charged na acid mucin. So, ang ano ating result? The result will be positive musicarmine stains show a dark red color. So, this is a small intestine stained with your musicarmine stain. So, nakikita natin yung dark red color now which is your which is now your acid mucin. So this is our last slide. Let's review again the different staining strategy for our carbohydrates. Again, ang mucin natin, remember your mucin can either be your acid mucin or neutral mucin. For us to differentiate acid to neutral mucin, then we will be using different staining method ng ating carbohydrates. Once it is alcyon blue positive and PAS negative, that's your acid mucin. Once it is, what, once it is alcyon blue negative, and PAS positive, that's gonna be your neutral mucin. But remember, your neutral mucin can also be alcyon blue positive. Pero once it's an alcyon, it is an alcyon blue positive and PAS positive, that would also mean that that's gonna be your glycogen. For us to differentiate glycogen to your neutral mucin, anong gagamitin natin? That's the time that we will be using now your diastase. Diastase resistant, that's your neutral mucin. Diastase sensitive, that's gonna be your glycogen. Doc, ano po ba yung principle ng diastase? Your diastase, or anong tinatawag natin na alpha amylase, hydrolyzes, and it extracts starch, glycogen, and breakdown products of your tissue polysaccharide. Meaning, your diastase will, will hydrolyze your glycogen. Therefore, when compared to a slide of tissue, containing glycogen, a diastase extraction slide will have no visible PAS staining. Kaya nakikita natin na nawawala yung PAS staining dito, nawawala yung magenta color once it is diastase sensitive. Kasi nga, your diastase will hydrolyze your glycogen. Kaya nawawala yung staining. Unlike here, your, your PAS positive and diastase resistant neutral mucin will maintain the PS staining kasi nga your diastase will only hydrolyze glycogen and not your neutral mucin. That is why it will maintain the staining of your PAS staining. So I guess the presentation of this algorithm is very simple and organized. Kaya mas na madali nating na iintindihan. It's gonna be my last lecture video and see you around. Hopefully, of course, you will become third year na in few in few days na lang. And hopefully see you in your clinical chemistry and your hematology. I hope you had fun learning in your histopathology. Don't worry when we reach your uh, hematology and your clinical chemistry. I believe we can share more, a lot more of your clinical cases, our clinical experiences. Kasi compared talaga sa histopathology, mga staining, I cannot really, I had uh, difficulty in sharing ng mga life experiences, mga clinical experiences. Kasi I really love sharing mga clinical experiences because that makes my discussion more interesting. But for histopathology, nahihirapan talaga akong mag-share ng mga life experiences. Wala akong share ng mga life or mga clinical cases. So, Sige lang, when we reach your hematology and your clinical chemistry, that's the time that we can share a lot of clinical cases. We can share a lot of clinical cases na quizzes and of course, mga experiences namin. So that ends 
Thank you, everyone. God bless you.